Good evening, Facebook. I just need y'all to bear with me for a moment. So me and me, Tisha, and the girls, today is Corinne's birthday. And we're really trying to practice this social distance and, and stuff like that. So we do like we normally do is just keep it small between us and you know, we we try to do something. So we went to to Townsend, Georgia, and we took we took her because we wanted to do it on the way back from Carolina. But we we took her to see the smallest church in America. I post pictures about that later. But smallest church in America. It's about an hour away, seventy miles from where we are. And on the way there, we seen the sign that said Brunswick. And knowing that, you know, that's where Amar passed away at, it's in Brunswick, Georgia. So we went on, did our trip, took some pictures, got out there, and it was it was real nice. And like I said, I'll put the pictures up later. But we left, and we was thinking about getting something to eat. So we stopped at the McDonald's um, parking lot. Uh, it was a gas station. And uh, we pulled in, and we were trying to figure out what we are going to do. Were they going to eat there? Or we was going to continue on with what Corinne wanted to do, which was get Taco Bell. So we was like, okay, we're just going to get um, some snacks and we'll get Taco Bell later. But Tisha was like, hey, um, how far is Brunswick from here? And I was like, it's about 30 minutes. She was like, okay, is it on the way back to the house? And I was like, yeah. So she was like, okay, well, if you want to, we can stop by and see Ahmad's memorial. So I was like, bet, you know, I'm all for that. We we can do that. And I I couldn't get the address from from the dedication run that I did. So I just did a little little searching on Facebook and finally it I, it popped up a picture and I had to I didn't look at the whole video, but I looked at the video of where um um, they started hunting him down. And I'll explain more about that in a second. And right when you turn into, you will see the sign. As soon as the video come on, as you um, see the sign, it says Satilla Shores. So I said, okay, well, I'm pretty sure that's, that's, where, it, that's where this is it. So I Googled Satilla Shores and it was about 30, 30 minutes from where we was at, put in the GPS, and we going on. Now, we driving, or I'm driving, and the whole time I'm thinking to myself, you know, how this experience is going to be for me, you know, when we pull up. And um, just going over my thoughts and emotions to see how I would, you know, how if I could process what I'm about to do. And, um... So we get closer and closer there, and I take the exit, and Tisha was like, you know, I don't want to, you know, pretty much she didn't want to be intrusive and wanted to be that that person. Like, we just, we want to be nosy or anything like that. So, you know, I definitely understood what she was saying. So she was like, we'll just, um, just drive by, you know, and you know, I was going to plan on dropping my head and just saying a quick prayer, and we're going to just keep rolling on. But um, so we riding up, GPS said point zero five, point zero point five miles, five tenths of a mile away. So we, as we riding up, I see this this sign that says Satilla Shores, and there's a news van out there, a woman in a blue dress, guy with the camera, and I turn in, and as soon as I turn in, like a wave of emotions came over my body like I never, ever experienced this way before. And I was telling the teacher, I didn't see my mom, not, not my mom, I'm sorry, uh, my grandmother in the casket, my uncle, my mother-in-law in the casket. And I never felt this type of emotion before. So we were riding into the neighborhood. And if you've seen the video, you know what I'm, what I'm talking about. When you look in this video and... I got to see what this this person that was recording was looking at. 
And at that moment, I'm I'm driving and I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, it's around that corner. I know it's around that corner because I remember saying this in the video. So I round the corner and sure enough, that's where that's where the camera, that's where the, the people are. And that's where the news vans are. And that's where the balloons are and and all these other things are. So I make a right and the memorial where he where he got killed is off to the left. I'll, I'll go down and there's two cops at the end of this cul-de-sac. And I, I pull up to him. I say, hey, I'm, I'm pretty sure there's a dead end down here and I can't turn around. He said, oh, yeah, you're good. You can turn around right here. So when I back up in this 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 yard, I come back up and I let my other window down. Um, I said, hey, is that where my got killed at? Down down there. He's and the cop was like, yeah, that, that's where he he passed it. I said, if 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 it's okay, I just wanna I just wanna pull up and pay my respects. Is that okay? He said, yes, absolutely, that is okay. He said, just do me one favor, don't park in the grass, um, and you're good to go. <laughs> So, what I what I end up doing, like I said, I wasn't gonna stop. We were just gonna keep rolling on or whatever. But I just felt compelled to stop. So I'm I'm going up, and I'm, I'm I, I see a group of group of brothers and sisters to the left, another brother and sisters to the right, and I seen this this um this Caucasian lady. She's talking to them, and seeing this this brother in the chair, and I parked, and I got out. And I walk up, and I'm looking at chalk on the ground where where his body laid. And I, I I took my hat off and I prayed, I prayed, Lord, you know, just let justice be served for this man's life that's been taken, you know, and that type of thing. So when I, I when I finish my prayer, I put my hat back on and I and I'm walking away and. It, a brother come up to me and he, he he looked at me and I said um he said what's going on boss man I said I'm good yo I, I was like um are you the brother are you anybody in the family he said no nah, man I'm just I'm just a brother from Jacksonville and I was like okay okay yes yeah. I said I'm I'm just a brother from St Mary's I just came just to pay my respects and he was like man he said it's 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 crazy out here it's hard out here and I said yeah man I was, I was like I we we wasn't even going to come by so I got my wife kids in the car and we just you know we just stopped by and just want to pay our respects and he was like okay yeah he said i feel you and he said um i said but let me let me get about it here before i you know I, before i start to break here and this man looked at me before i left and he said he said take care black man take care black man and then i walk away and then when I get to the truck, he calls out again and he said, I'm proud of you, black man. I'm proud of you, black man. And then the sister, she put up, she put up a fist. You know? Man. <laughs> to feel, to feel that. I don't even know if I can, if I can just put in words the energy that was out there for anyone to understand, for anyone to feel. But the energy out there, I felt like a mob was still there. <laughs> and this guy, I was telling Tisha in the car, this, I don't know what it is, but this guy is different. This death is different. We done seen videos of Flando Castile getting shot, begging for his life. <laughs> we done seen Alton Sterling get shot. I'm sorry, getting choked out, begging for his life. I seen a video of a young man in the hotel getting shot with an AR-15, pretty much begging for his life. But this guy right here, my, this guy right here, I feel like he, I feel like his death is different. And if this don't change nothing in this world from this young man, the difference in his death feels different. The energy is different. People are different. If this does not change nothing in this world, I don't believe nothing 
else will. So I had to, I had to stop. I had to get out. I had to pay my respect. And I'm probably, I'm probably going to be emotional from this for a couple of days because I, I just, I just felt his energy there. And I want, I want everybody to feel my passion. I want everybody to, to feel my tears. I want everybody to feel uncomfortable because this is when the world will change. When we get uncomfortable with the same things happen over and over again. And it might not be a black man next time. It might not be. It might be another minority. It might be another person of color, with however you want to classify. But racism has got to change. And be doggone it if if another person has to go on a, a T-shirt or a hashtag just to get some type of change in the world. I, I just don't understand. But that's that's my little... <sighs> To us here. Okay. Yeah. Just one second. That's that's my little take for the day. Um, I'm not gonna apologize for messing nobody's day up. If you listen to this, I hope you get emotional just like me, and I hope you talk to the next person, and that person talk to the next person, and we just keep these conversations going. And one of these days, we're gonna we're gonna get up, and life is gonna be better. That's how we make America great again, by stopping the poison that's in this society with racism. That's how we make America great again. Nothing else. Nothing else. But I pray that we have these uncomfortable conversations every day because our kids are going to grow up and we don't need them repeating the same cycle. All right, good peoples. Y'all be blessed. And tell somebody about tell somebody about how uncomfortable you feel with racism. Black man, talk to somebody about how you feel about having to put a mask on because you're black. Black woman do the same thing. White man, white woman, I don't like using that word. My brothers, my sisters, let's Let's talk to everybody about how uncomfortable we are with racism. Let's do that. Good day, y'all.